Oh, here you are. Did you manage to land a lucky poll on the welfare meals tonight? Let's just get straight to the point. Has anything else happened with the society? Patience, Paimon. Even as the situation continues to brew, we still need to make sense of what we learned so far and go over any sticking points. I'm actually still thinking about the first thing that came to my mind when I noticed something amiss. Namely, why didn't anyone come to me about it? Oh, that's a good point. Could whatever they're afraid of be so powerful that even you won't be able to do anything about it? But even if such a thing existed, how could they be so sure without checking with me first? It'd be one thing if it was just one or two people, but it seems like everyone's convinced that I won't be able to help. Which leads me to believe that it's more likely that they think I just wouldn't care to help them. Yes, something like that. Dugier must have told them something to make them think I won't take their side. So it became imperative for me to refute that and prove my true stance. Of course, I had originally planned to do this in a more covert way, but I had to improvise when you identified the guy who'd lost his hat with everyone present. There was no way to keep our investigation a secret after that. That makes sense. Uh, wait, but does that mean it was all Paimon's fault? The last thing that guy wanted was for Dugier to find out that he'd lost it. He would have never brought the matter up on his own. But now... Not only has Dugier found out that he'd lost his hat, he's also realized that we were the ones who found it. That likely set his internal alarms off all at once. Yes, that's the conclusion I came to as well. It's the only thing that could explain the fear. If we didn't act right then and there, Dugier would probably come up with some other way to hide the truth and we'd be back to square one. So after giving the matter some thought, I tossed that black gem onto the ground. I must say, I was pretty satisfied with the results. Ah, so you did that on purpose? Yes, that's right. Of course, that box was discovered as part of our investigation of the Society from the very beginning. I had no way to know if any of the members had actually seen the gem before, but since I had to do something, I decided to gamble. Right. And I said back there that I had no idea what the gem represented. That should have been enough to let people know that it's still early days for my investigation. And since I was traveling with you, heroes who have never turned a blind eye to evil and injustice, they would also understand that we're here to help, rather than to tolerate or uphold the status quo. You used us as a part of your plan too! My apologies. There was no time and quite a lot to explain, so I figured it might be easier to just let you see a few things for yourselves. But I can assure you that I've now told you everything there is to know. Of course, you're under no obligation, but I would really appreciate it if you could continue to lend me your support and help me figure out the true secret behind the society. Would you be willing to lend me your support? You have my thanks. Now, there are still two outstanding matters in our investigation. The first is the secret of the hats. I've examined one before. There was nothing suspicious about the item itself. The other is the true purpose of the black gem. We haven't been able to get anything out of anyone with actual knowledge of it. It's my hope that a brave fish will take my bait and venture outside of their dark and murky pool. I'll put some music on while we wait. Grace, but may I come in? I'm afraid that someone's been following me. 
Please, do. I apologize for my lack of composure. These two are the guests that came with you to our gathering place, correct? Yes, my lover Fasal told me all about you. Please, help us, Your Grace. He's in great danger right now. Slow down, take a deep breath, and start from the top. What happened at the Society? I'm sorry, Your Grace. I will try. I think I should start from when you saw Fasol last. You mean, when we saw him at the gathering place? Yes, he fled immediately, but many members are hot on his heels. Thankfully, he still managed to meet up with me and explain everything that had happened. Now that he's lost Dugier's trust, what awaits him is agonizing censure. Censure? Censure is Dugier's method of establishing control, as well as the thing we all fear the most. Rather than listening to me explain what it is, Your Grace, please, just let me show it to you. Every secret may be found within... Ah, uh, here you are. I was wondering where you had run off to in such a hurry. Please excuse us, Your Grace. It was never our intention to disturb you like this. You see, Avisa's mental state has been rather unstable ever since she arrived at the fortress. She rambles often, has hallucinations. It may be best to dismiss her babbling as random gibberish. I don't recall hearing a knock or giving permission for you to come in. Oh, my apologies. I merely did not wish for your grace to be alarmed. Had I not been so focused on recovering her, I would have followed all the rules of etiquette to the letter. So please, forgive my discourtesy. <laughs> like we believe you. Please, there's no need to be upset. It's only natural to want to side with the poor sick girl, but I know his grace to be a reasonable man. Well then, what if the reasonable man wants to hear the lunatic out? That would be perfectly fine with me. Oh, and just so you know, we've also found the missing Mr. Fasal. I had no idea why he was so upset about losing his hat, really. Thankfully, he has already returned to his senses. We've brought him back to our place, so there's no need to worry. I'm sorry, Your Grace. I don't have anything more to say. This is what you're afraid of, correct? You can tell me everything. I'll do all I can for you. I... I... I've never seen that thing in my life. Your Grace, I don't think there's anything else she would like to say. Pressuring her will not get you anywhere. Mm. It's all right, Elise. As long as you tell me what it is that you're terrified of, no matter what it is, it will no longer be able to hurt you. I swear this on my name and honor as the Duke. Your Grace! <sighs> Forget it. I'll keep my mouth shut. I've already said everything I could say about the matter. I'm sorry, Your Grace, but I really don't have anything more to say. Please, don't press me further. But why? In that case, Avis and I will be off. Once again, please accept my apologies for disturbing your peaceful evening, Your Grace. Miss Avis, please show me your head. That is an order. There's nothing there. Your Grace, I know you have long tired of my words, but please believe me when I say you've merely let your worries get to your head. 
The society has never caused trouble for you or any of the guards at the fortress. We've spent all of our time working hard and trying to lead better lives. Why are you doing everything in your power to prove our guilt? What's wrong with the current state of affairs? I'll do anything for you, as long as you give me the word. Why are you so intent on getting rid of someone who's been unfalteringly loyal? Your words bore me. You know the consequences if I find you to be lying. Everything that I do, I do for the Fortress of Meripede. But your grace is welcome to visit us any time to confirm the true intent of our activities. All right, Avis. Let's head back. Sooner or later, all will pay the price for their arrogance. Oh, he must have been well prepared for this exact scenario, or he wouldn't have dared to be so openly hostile. All the more reason for us to be patient. The entire society are his hostages. His subordinates would definitely react if he were taken into custody. And that's why he dared to bare his fangs right in front of me. The true secret of the society is neither on the hat nor on the members' heads. Dugier probably knew this from the very beginning, which is why he didn't panic. However, if we were to look at the rules, it would also seem like the head has to be the place where they're keeping all of their secrets. Yeah, none of this makes sense to Paimon either. What are they trying to hide? The hats are definitely being used to hide a secret. But there's nothing wrong with the hats themselves. But if there's nothing on her head, why did Avis feel the need to remove her hat? From the way Dugier acted, he must have known from the beginning that we wouldn't be able to find any evidence. I can't seem to... I have an idea, but... a key piece of evidence over to us without Dugier noticing. That would mean that Avis didn't stay silent out of fear. She stayed silent because she'd already given us what we needed. Let me take a look. I managed to remove this from the hair clip. It's long, slender and conical, it's hollow on the inside and looks something like a cross between a nail and a thorn. Uh, Paimon's last again. Let's see. What if we do this? Hey, what are you doing? Uh, wait. Some kind of dark liquid is leaking out of the gem. It. The ch what they do is that they to get get these gems, make these things leak onto the yarn and make it into the hat. And some of it has been absorbed by this thorny looking thing. The gem is used as a container for the, some type of liquid. You've probably heard before that water is filled with the strongest emotions of humanity. With that in mind, this liquid is probably a highly concentrated solution of fear. Oh, so that's why even touching it will make you remember unpleasant things. 
So, it, with this infused thorn... Dugier would be able to censure others. I can only imagine how it would feel to have this directly injected into your brain. The moment it hits you would be like being flooded with all the terrors you've ever experienced in your life. Agony, desolation, and an overwhelming sense of despair. No wonder they're all so terrified of it. So, was the hat meant to cover up their wounds? Mm -hmm. That might not even be all. Let's go get them right away. We can't let Dugier escape with all of the evidence. Yeah, he's gonna destroy all of it. The cart's already there. Your Grace, we have taken the Society members into custody. They all tried to flee just a little while ago, as if they had received some kind of order. We decided to forestall their plan, and were just about to send the word when you unexpectedly arrived. It looks like we're missing a few. Great work, everyone. You had prepared for something like this all along? I had them stay here to keep an eye on things, so I'm glad that my intuition turned out to be correct. Perform a thorough search of the Society's headquarters and bring all the members to me. Understood, Your Grace. Now, let's check on them. As expected, they all have a hollow thorn inserted into a wound on their head. Ooh! Paimon's glad her eyesight isn't so good that she can see it from here. I... Paimon's gonna float away for a bit. They didn't pull the thorn out? They probably left it there as a lasting reminder of Dugier's censure. These people must have had to endure an unimaginable amount of pain. Let's go check out the other areas, too. Oh my god. Fine, Paimon. This is a book that Paimon found in a box next to the bookshelf. Its contents are exactly the same as this book on the shelf. The colors of the covers are completely different, though, and the names of the authors also don't match up. So these are just for show. Yeah, and they dared to claim that they wrote these too. Look at what I found. This is... This is a surveillance port. With this, Dugier would be able to remotely monitor everything that's happening at the gathering place. So even if Dugier's not there in person, he'll still always have eyes on the members. That explain why they were all so terrified. Indeed. It's easy to become lost and confused when you're given no instructions or any kind of script to follow. And if any action you take may be deemed a mistake, then perhaps it's better to do less, or to not do anything at all. Dugier has already tamed them to his will. How sickening. Your Grace! Your Grace! What's the matter? We couldn't find any society members in the other areas. It also seems like none of the equipment in those rooms were ever used. All the signs of wear and tear are fake. The lime scale, the layers of dust, they were all deliberately added. We also investigated the members' residences and weren't able to find anything. Their neighbors all say that they haven't returned home for ages. What the hell? Oh. Is that right? They're gone? That could only mean... Their real headquarters are somewhere else. Indeed. 
As long as he allowed society members to mingle with others, even with threats of censure, Dujie knew that he couldn't stop all of his members from speaking out. Meanwhile, this marvelous gathering place will lose all of its value as soon as a whistleblower sounds the alarm. So instead of being his real base, this is just an elaborate performance. The rest areas, the fancy equipment, even the members that we saw, they were merely part of the front. And only the most docile and well-trained members were selected as his performers. But then, where can we actually find him? <sighs> Let me think. Dujier must be holding all the rest of his members in another place. And if the overseer of my fortress guard has never alerted me to anything of the sort, he must be in Dujier's pocket. Let's go find him. I'm of the same mind. Let's go. You too, follow me. We're not letting him get away. Did that person flee here? That's the most likely scenario to me. He's probably already caught wind of Dujier's declaration of war against me, and has fled to seek his protection. Let's keep heading down. There are some abandoned areas in there. Since he needs space, I'd guess Dujier probably converted them into his headquarters. We should be on the right track. Now we just need to find that turncoat. Let's go. We can take this path. You guys take the other. I'll follow you wisely. Hey, there's somebody over here. After them. Surprise, run. Got ya. <sighs> did Dujier send you? Why did you attack that guard? <sighs> I will take your cooperation into consideration when it comes time to hand out sentences. But Mr. Dugier, he, he didn't want this guy to expose our true location. We were just about to dispose of him when you caught up to us. So, in other words, your headquarters should be this way. Yes, it's just down this way. You'll make it there once you've seen it pass through a large drainage pipe. Guards, take them away. Let's go. It's about time that we find out what Dugier's really after. space down here yeah these are all former work areas they've been left abandoned due to a lack of funds 
There are usually guards on patrol here. It would seem that all of those guards have been bought as well. Stay sharp. He's got a ton of surprises waiting for us, I'm sure. Have a safe trip. You're safe now. Just follow the guards and leave this place. Who knew that there'd be Gardamax here? Dushi ain't really prepared for everything! And that would explain the strange decommission requests I received, as well as account for all the Gardamax that had mysteriously gone missing. It seems like he's prepared for an all-out confrontation with me. Hey, what's this? Seems like some kind of handbook. Let me see. Ah, this should be the Society's real rules book. It lists all the rules that they're expected to follow. Members are not permitted to speak to each other or to leave without formal permission. Five members shall form a group, and the whole group will be punished for any single member's wrongdoings. Anyone who reports a fellow member's misbehavior shall be rewarded with food and water. I see. So it's much as I expected. But that's just cruel and unreasonable. To obtain food and water, prisoners are forced to snitch on others, and in the process cause pain to those around them. To avoid punishment, they learn to stop talking with one another. This leaves the wounds they've already received to fester, however. And so resentment builds until every prisoner has become an island. Finally, isolated and without hope, they accept their fate as Dugier's slaves. Do you remember what happened to Paimon? She rejected all the snacks in the box once she was spooked by that black gem. She's usually all for tasty snacks, but she chose to go against her instincts after a negative experience. Ugh, is that the best example you could come up with? Anyway, Paimon still thinks she made the right decision. And never hurts to be careful. No, your decision was valid. However, it's also valid to interpret that as a decision that you only made under emotional duress. The human heart is like a raft in a vast and empty ocean. We convince ourselves that we're in control, but in truth, a single wave could sweep us off course and send us crashing into the path of a storm. Those who use fear to lead others astray must pay for that crime. If I'm not mistaken, the space ahead should be the central area of this place, but the door has been locked. Rather than confront Dugier, I think it's more important right now for us to rescue as many society members as possible. You guys should wait here. We'll try to open the door and check out some other spots. Open the door... Would we have to do something to this mechanism here? Ugh, oh, 
Pyramid doesn't get it at all. Forget it. Pyramid's just gonna do some trial and error. all the way up, are we? Activate the mechanism in front of us first, just like before. Let's see if that changes anything. These should be the prison cells. Hmm. Lots of empty cells in here. Dugier's probably moved them elsewhere already. Let's still rescue the ones who got left behind, though. Every person counts! be able to get through to her right now not with the stress response in the way i'd also guess there are many others here who are more or less like her let's let the guards take care of them for now and keep pushing forward oh all right let's search for an exit first
open. Huh. Maybe it's his grace. I'll go take a look. I leave this area to you. Make sure to bring everyone out safe. Understood. And please take care as well, your grace. We'll return here right away and await your orders. Mm-hmm. Just focus on the tasks you've been given. I already have reliable help over here. Let's go back. We have unfinished business, do we not? That mechanism from the first room. Maybe we'll also need to hold it in place using the same device to open the door that leads to the central area. Don't forget to bring these along. The guards from the Fortress of Meripede have already taken control of this area. You're safe now. <laughs> this seems to be something like a console. This is a surveillance terminal. The information collected by the surveillance ports we found previously will be sent here. I'm sure Dugier really enjoyed sitting here and making his people dance like puppets on strings. Oh, that makes Paimon even angrier! I must confess to being furious. To think that there are still some of you who find it permissible to spit upon our rules. Remember their names. Fasal and Avis. They've betrayed you, betrayed us. 
And today you will see with your own eyes what'll happen to those who betray our cause. Go on, Avis. Pierce his skull with the thorn in your hands, and then push in the Aqua Dolores. Of course, you will do it one drop at a time. Let it do its magic again and again, and don't stop until you've pushed all of it in! Thistle... I'm sorry. It... it's okay. I'll... find a way to endure. Oh, shut your wretched mouths! When did I give you permission to speak? My rules are the paramount law of this place! Only more pain will come to those who dare to disobey! That's enough, Dugier. Your rabid screams have been beyond nauseating. <laughs> Is that... His Grace? Oh, Risley. I knew you would come, but I didn't expect you to be so quick. Must you still refuse to let me be? Did I not spell everything out for you already? What's so blasphemous about sharing a slice of the cake with me when you've already got the entire fortress at your feet? It would seem that you can't see the difference between sharing and looting. And on top of that... Look at your people. Are they not starving as you wolf down your cake? You... Stop acting all high and mighty like some hero of justice! Have you forgotten? Nobody in this blasted fortress is innocent! We are all irredeemable monsters who have destroyed something that others held dear! What's so wrong about punishing those who deserve to be punished? It's what they've always deserved! And please, are you really gonna tell me that you care about their lives and well-being when you just need a supply of labor to keep this place running? Is it that all you need to keep your cushy life? Sadly, you're wrong on both counts. Unlike you, I've never seen them as currency. The fortress is not only a place for confinement, but also a place for rebirth. Just as people are free to give in to the darkness within their hearts, they are also free to seek redemption and a new beginning. Our bodies have limits, but our spirits will always remain free. They may have made mistakes, but they are still human beings with people and things that they cherish. And most importantly, they should always retain the freedom to choose their own path once they've reflected on their past misdeeds. But you... You're destroying their spirits with fear, taking their freedom away so that they'll become slaves who will never again feel or think. And you say that's what they've always deserved? You are nothing compared to them. He... he's really mad. You think me arrogant, Risley. Well, I think you're too young and naive. You understand nothing of this world. Nobody actually sees this fortress as any kind of just a wonderful place. See it for what it is. A dumping ground of pain and misery, irredeemable now and irredeemable forever! No prisoner will listen to you out of gratitude of their hearts. The whip is the only way to make them obey. Had you been just one step slower, I would have already taken control of all the garden mechs in this place. Your vision gives you strength. But how long will it hold against these powerful constructs? <laughs> you talk big, but in the end, you know nothing outside of power and control. In that case, let me give you a small taste of what real power looks like. No rest for the wicked. Shadow Raven, let night fall. Try to look it. Feel the beat. Shiver. Yeah. 
A moment, please. Let's begin. No backup, huh? Fine by me. If you think fear can control everything, well then, terrify me. Don't high road me! You're just another crook! And it's time you got treated like one! <laughs> What's the matter? Too scared to shoot straight? I, I warned you! Unauthorized punishment and torture are prohibited here! As to do, you should set an example! Funny how that slipped my mind. Well, from this point on, you can forget about that rule. The rules of the fortress are there to keep the likes of you in check. But if the Duke wants somebody dead, he needs no justification. Understood. Sorry for taking so long. Did I keep you waiting? No, not at all. Paimon didn't know you were so considerate. <laughs> if you ask me, I'd say I actually feel very helpless. There's no way that I could truly empathize with the fear that the members felt every day. I could comfort and compensate them all I want, but it might still not be enough to repair the damage that has been done. I have to take responsibility for it, as does the fortress. Yeah, it's the least that we could do. So, do you have a plan for how you're gonna deal with him yet? Oh, Dugier? I've already got an idea. For now, I think I'll do nothing. Huh? Why? I think it's a very fitting punishment for him to have to imagine the sorts of punishments that will soon be coming his way. He'll be left in the dark with regards to both the dates and the details of his punishment. Of course, that's not to say that I'll be letting him off scot-free. It's not often that I actually get the chance to be creative with my punishments. 
I'm going to talk to the members of the society. He'll get a chance to experience everything that he's ever inflicted on them. Paimon didn't know you could also be so harsh! Looks like she should watch her tongue when she's around you in the future. Why do you think I'd do that kind of thing to you? You offend me, Paimon. Anyway, jokes aside, thank you so much for all of your help. There's still a lot for me to take care of, so... How about this? I'll treat you to a meal in two days at the Coupon Cafeteria. We should have a better handle on things by then. Uh, no, Paimon's had enough of that place. Don't worry, it won't be the same old welfare meal. I'll make the necessary arrangements. And you've got yourself a deal! Ah, you're here. Paima never forgets about meals. Even if the traveler forgets, Paima will remind her for sure. Uh, that's not what Paima meant at all. Risley, you got what Paima meant, right? Hmm? I'm a little confused, actually. Hey, not you too! Jokes aside, I've got some good news. After taking a look, the doctors have let me know that it shouldn't be too difficult to extract the thorns. Which means that everyone should be able to recover after a period of rest. As for their mental recoveries, most are making good progress as well. We've added a few who were more severely affected to a special observation list. You sure got everything taken care of, Risley. I try my best. After all, it's my duty to take care of everything that happens within my territory. Please, go ahead. Ah, that's a bit of a long story. I once had a similar experience. It had to do with the host family I lived with as a child. I was an orphan, adopted by a couple with a great deal of love in their hearts. I had many siblings, and we all adored each other. Once we were older, Mom and Dad would turn us over to be individually adopted by families of greater means, and go on to adopt more young children. They were perfect parents. Or so I thought. And then? And then, I found out we were merely raised as livestock. Once we had reached a certain age, our parents would bring us to the market for sale. All children that were sold would leave the house, and nobody would know what became of them. As for those who didn't sell, they were merely disposed of. Did you know I once considered myself an extremely lucky child? And all of my friends, all of my siblings, they all felt this way as well. I was also not the first to find out about the truth. All those who found out before me were simply added to the disposal pile. I could never shake the feeling of irony every time I juxtaposed their tragic ends against our parents' adoring smiles. Yes, like the society, my parents created a facade of joy, lied to satiate their desires, and even employed incredibly cruel methods to keep their grasp on power. They did all of that, but never considered how their actions would utterly ruin all the children they took under their wing. Worse, perhaps they never cared about that at all. But I 
did. So in the end, I killed them and set all of the remaining children free. I was convicted for my crimes and exiled to the fortress of Meripede. My methods were extreme, yes, but I was still a teenager at the time. I'd been betrayed by those I trusted most, and I didn't think that more moderate ways would solve the problem. My doubt and helpless anger pushed me forward until I got what I deserved. It's all right. You don't have to tell me what you think. I've already committed to this path, regardless of what anyone may say about it. The least I can do is to make sure that the same tragedy will not happen again in my new home. Sorry to disturb you, everyone. Oh, it's a visa for Saul. Are you two feeling better yet? It was all because you arrived in time. I managed to escape unscathed. We came here on impulse today, because we were hoping that you'd be able to lend us a hand, Your Grace. Please. Go on right ahead. I'll do my best to help. Within reason, of course. It's... <clears throat> I'd like to be wedded to Avis here at the fortress. You're getting married? Yeah. We met each other through the society and both fell into Dugier's trap. But even during our time there, we never doubted each other. We always believed that Dugier was manipulating us, trying to make us mistrust each other. And after this incident, we've come to believe that we've found the one for the rest of our lives. <laughs> you could say we managed to make the best out of a bad situation. He didn't abandon me, and I didn't forsake him either. But we're still both prisoners. And we also aren't sure if the fortress is the best place to host something so celebratory. So we are just wondering, is our request a bit too out of line? Hmm. You're right in that the fortress has never hosted a wedding before. But that's no reason to say no, is it? I'll help you make the arrangements. If you need anything special shipped in from the surface, just say the word. Oh, we can't thank you enough, Your Grace. We are actually also planning to stay here after the conclusion of our sentences. Yeah, we've already made tons of special memories here. So now, it'd be too hard to leave. And we have full confidence in the fortress's future with you at the helm, Your Grace. Your trust is the highest form of praise. Hey, loosen up a bit! Shouldn't you be the happiest man in Tevat to hear that people would like to stay of their own free will? Yeah. I'll always take a genuine expression of faith over any obligation to obey.